Alex, welcome to CNBC. It's great to have you. Thank you very much for letting me be here. So help me understand what you're doing in our region and help me understand the delegation that you're part of as well. Russia in the UAE, what's the focus? The objective of this is to present Russia and to explain the opportunities that Russia creates for the investment community and for the businesses which operate in MENA region and United Arab Emirates. Especially when it comes for our company, e-commerce business. Basically, the objective of our company, how we see ourselves, is to connect sellers and merchants, manufacturers of the business in the whole world with the population of Russia, with people who visit our website and app. On a monthly basis, we have 85 million people visiting our website. Mm. So this cre creates immense opportunities for global business. And the UAE is Russia's largest trading partner in the region. So is this a market where we might see Ozone expand into the future? Well, at this point in time, we are focused on our domestic market, given that the growth opportunity today is huge. This year alone, for example, we expect to grow at 120% year over year. We have seven quarters consecutively of orders growing more than 100%, and the GMV, cross merchandise value, of our seller partners growing at uh, over 100% for six quarters. Mm. I was looking over some numbers and the growth that you've seen through the pandemic has been quite remarkable. As I understand it, you've almost doubled the customer base, basically. Mm. 21 million active users in exactly. Q3. You set a new record for order growth as well. So COVID-19 really has been a huge tailwind for the business. Is that fair to say? Yes, uh, I would say that uh, COVID <coughs> accelerated growth of the e-commerce industry in Russia by about one year. But <clears throat> Russia is slightly different. The restrictions were for about one quarter in 2020. And I would say now for retail industry, it's business as usual. So <clears throat> there was acceleration, but the trends which grow e-commerce are structural and not completely related to, to COVID. That's building the infrastructure, creating technologies, which help connect merchants to the customers over this huge country over 11 time zones. Mm. So I would expect the growth, the growth, high growth rate to continue for years. So this high growth rate will continue, you say. What makes you say it is sustainable? Because we've seen a boom of e-commerce through the pandemic. What makes you think that's yeah. here to stay? Well, first of all, actual results. <clears throat> As we discussed, there was a restriction on ability of offline retail to operate in 2020. I would say from March to about end of June. And since then, all retail is open. But we still, for quarters, we continue to see high growth rate. This is driven by our investments in infrastructure, in fulfillment capacity, in logistics, and in building information technologies will help sellers manage their assortment price and so on, communicate to customers. And we see huge demand from the seller community of the service. Help me understand the impact of the Omicron variant in Russia. Are you concerned about the trajectory of the virus within the country and the possible impact that this could have on the business, your operations, and the supply chain broadly? Well, it's not clear yet. Uh, some people say that the, there could be potentially a lockdown. We don't know yet. I think Russia is quite ready for the, for the COVID. Uh, hospitals are ready and like, uh, the government is doing everything possible to make sure that the country operates as usual. If this happens, what on our side in e-commerce, especially in our company, in Oslo, we always overinvest because we kind of optimistic company. We expect the growth will remain. <laughs> so we have uh, enough of capacity, I think, to uh, to embrace the growth and have more than 100% growth for for next year, and we'll able to support our customers and sellers with high quality services. Mm. Has the trajectory of the virus in Russia changed your strategy in any way? I know you said you've been investing quite heavily in developing the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You've seen the boom of e-commerce through the pandemic, but what does that mean for the strategy moving forward? This is what investors want to know. It demonstrated that there is very high demand from sellers and from customers and people embrace e-commerce and they love the service. And I think we're kind of on the tipping point where it's more convenient now to shop online than offline. And we see that that's why, for example, frequency has increased substantially to, it's still low, 7.5 orders uh, per year means like slightly over one order per month. If we compare to developed markets like say Amazon, it's uh, over 60 orders per, per month. But the trajectory is very promising. Mm. Frequency is going up, say uh, a year ago we had about 500,000 customers who are doing weekly orders. These are very loyal e-commerce customers. 
and now it's over two million of people. So it's uh, like this very loyal audience has increased by four times in a year. Can I also ask you about geopolitics? This has been a major focus in Russia. Mm -hmm. Of course, we see tensions between the US and Russia continuing to simmer away. Uh, this week, we're going to see a conversation between President Biden and President Putin. There's tensions on the border between Russia and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. The US even believes that Russia could invade Ukraine in early 2022. How does this geopolitical environment impact a business like yours? Mm -hmm. Well, it's very hard for me. I don't think in position to comment on geopolitics. I'm a humble business operator. What we are doing, we are building the unified economic space where sellers from any country could sell to combined audience of people in the countries where we operate. And I think building this business ties and commercial ties helps to maintain peace and like make countries live together in a peaceful way, mm. which I think is very important. So we have the, the threat of Western sanctions and possibly more to come really impacting the Russian economy and the ruble over the past couple of years. What does that mean for the mm -hmm. business? And is that going to be a headwind for you into the future? We operate in a slightly different environment than like more developed industries. There is a structural change. Uh, businesses come to e-com penetration of e-commerce in Russia is still 10%. Globally, it's substantially higher and some markets is closer to 30%. So the market is expanding and our market share is increasing. Uh, the, the structure of the e-commerce market is quite fragmented. So top three players account for less than 30% in total share. Which, which means that largest players will continue to grow and we are one of the largest. So I think irrespective of what happens with the overall Russian economy, we'll continue to see growth of, of this sector of the business. What type of growth should we expect from the Russian economy in 2022 in your view? Well, it's, it's very hard for, uh, to comment for me <laughs> because as, as we discussed, we operate in, in, in combination of technology and e-commerce. That's the the, uh, the fastest growing segment of the, of the market. Mm -hmm. You mentioned we're going to see growth and perhaps even consolidation in mm -hmm. the Russian market. What might that look like? And are you on the hunt perhaps for any acquisitions? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we are perceived by the market as one of the aggressive offensive players, which is uh, expanding a lot. Our object approach to this is do it organically by building the infrastructure and building technologies, assembling uh, the team of software engineers. Uh, m and would it be possible in the market? Potentially, yes, but that's not our objective. Mm -hmm. We see lots of opportunities for organic growth, and I think from the risk management perspective, that's the safest strategy, which uh, will uh, provide better returns for the investors. So what's more important for you moving forward? Is it uh, improving and gaining on market share, or is it chasing profitability? Uh, in e-commerce, market share is fully correlated with uh, profitability. Therefore, objective number one for us is to continue to gain market share. Eventually, the growth rate will slow down. And in this business, when the growth rate slows down, there is efficiency because fixed costs dilute over much larger volume of items or parcels that we ship. So uh, it's, it's very important to gain market share because this is the key driver of the profitability in the future. Mm. And what is the timeline on profitability now? Has it moved forward as a result of the acceleration we've seen through the pandemic? Uh, obviously, acceleration has negative impact in, in a particular moment on profitability because we have to overinvest in the infrastructure. Um, it's hard to say when exactly the company could break even. I think in two years it's quite possible. We want to decelerate, but we want to decelerate organically and not by stepping on the brake pedal. Mm. So what's your message to investors now, particularly those NASDAQ investors holding on to the ADR looking for profitability? What do mm -hmm. you tell them? I think that the investment community over X and that doesn't appreciate the growth rate. And that's, it's not driven by COVID. It's driven by organic changes, which is happening in the industry with adoption of more sellers and increasing frequency of, uh, of purchase of customers. So yeah, I'm absolutely positive about here yeah, best possible perspectives of this business and of our company. So validated on the strategy. I, I also wanted to ask you about the acquisition of the banking license in mm -hmm. the second quarter. What's the revenue potential in that financial services vertical now? Well, it's, uh, it's still small, the fintech part of Ozone, but uh, there is very natural combination between uh, customers. For customers, the plan is to open debit accounts and provide buy now, pay later financing. Merchant side is even more important 
providing capital to finance their working capital is very important to maximize growth of these small and medium businesses, of which 85% of all of sellers of, of ozone are small and medium businesses. And typically, these companies are, are restricted on their access to capital. We, we were doing seller financing for two years already, and based on data that we see, we are very good in scoring, because we hold their inventory, we track their sales, we understand who is, uh, who is safe to, to provide credit. So uh, after acquiring the debit license, in Q1 and Q2 next year, we plan to open debit accounts and credit for, and credit for the merchant community of Ozone. Mm. What type of growth do you expect to see in financial services, and is that going to be a driver for you into the future? Uh, it's, it will definitely be a driver. The growth rate will be high from a very low base How <laughs> initially, <high? laughs> yes. But yeah, uh, I think it will be a very sizable part of Ozone, but not ready to comment yet because like it we need to demonstrate by actual results performance in 2022. Mm. How else are you planning on growing the business into next year? What's going to be your primary focus? Delivering on our objectives. There is competition but our ability for growth is depends fully on us. We need to implement our investment program on logistics and fulfillment infrastructure and deliver on information technology products that we we have to develop fintech, for example. That's one of the highest priorities. And also developing the tools for the sellers, which make their business more efficient. We very much believe in advertising. With more than 60,000 sellers already on the platform, they need to differentiate. It's, kind of, it's our objective <laughs> to provide tools for them, to help them promote their, uh, their products, promote their brands. And this will be a very important uh, source of profitability for the company. We'll leave it there, Alexander. Thank you so much for speaking with me today.